I have always been fascinated by retrofuturism, the visions of the future from eras past. You've seen these images, they often show up on the cover of old science fiction novels, or show cities filled with flying cars. Some of them seem a little absurd now, but some have come frighteningly close to predicting the future. Now, part of what I love about these images is that they show humankind's optimism about our future and that we have this incredible ability to turn these fantastic ideas into reality. And that's why I became enamored of technology. Technology, to me, represents the suite of tools that we have at our disposal to turn our fantastic ideas about improving the world into real, tangible change. What seemed far-fetched 50, even five years ago, is now part of our everyday life thanks to technology. It's the closest thing to a superpower we have, which is why I love working in this industry. And New Zealand's technology industry is booming right now. Uh, technology is our third largest export earner after dairy and tourism. It makes up 8% of our GDP, and that seems to be growing every year. What we don't realize, however, is that we're building this country's economic future on a foundation of sand. Most of our current focus in tech is on digital technologies, accounting software, mobile apps, social platforms. It, it seems that we've forgotten or chosen to overlook the fact that tech includes more than just digital technologies. Now, this year's New Zealand High Tech Awards are a great example. Of the 38 companies listed as finalists for these awards, 30 were digital technology companies. And digital tech is great, and our country does fairly well in this sector. But it's not the technology that's going to help us solve the really pressing problems of our time. Digital technology is not going to help us feed billions across the globe or undo the tremendous amount of environmental damage we've done or help us face the tremendous amount of healthcare issues that our aging populations will be facing. Now, to build our future, we need to pay more attention to deep technology. Deep technology can have a few different definitions, but I think the nonprofit group Hello Tomorrow sums it up well. Deep technology are innovations that have the potential to advance technological frontiers. They're solutions built around scientific or engineering advances. Now, this encompasses areas of um, fundamental sciences like chemistry, but also robotics and biotechnology, as well as frontier industries like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things where software and digital technologies are quick fixes and tweaks to the way things are currently done, deep technology is the realization of those futuristic dreams from eras past. Deep technology is allowing us to explore insects as an alternative feedstock and revolutionizing our farming to be more efficient. Deep tech is looking at innovative therapies for neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and finding ways of using synthetic biology as a replacement for chemotherapy. It's turning air pollution into ink and rethinking the way renewable energy is converted and stored. Now, Lancetech are a great example of a New Zealand deep tech success story. They're creating biofuels using bacteria, which feed on the waste greenhouse gases from steel mills. Uh, Lancetech is the company that Virgin Atlantic partnered with to make the eco-friendly flight from Florida to London just last week. And they started down the road from here on a lab bench in Parnell. One floor below them, in the basement of that same building, Rocket Lab, who are sending rockets into orbit from this side of the globe, were experimenting inside shipping containers to keep their explosions somewhat contained. <laughs> and it is in that very building, and because of ambitious companies like Lancetech and Rocket Lab, that Level 2 was founded. Level 2 is New Zealand's only deep tech-focused incubator and experimental co-working space, which I now have the privilege of running. Deep tech innovations need space and a community of slightly mad scientists in order to develop, and this is what Level 2 sets out to do. Combined with access to advice on anything from patent law to process engineering, we're building the next generation of companies who are advancing technological frontiers. Currently, however, most of New Zealand's startup investment is not going into deep tech. It's still dominated by digital. Do we really need another online marketplace, another peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, another on-demand company? Hasn't SaaS now found its way into almost every industry? 
we need to realize that we're on the tail end of this latest wave of innovation, one which was powered by social, mobile, and cloud. Some great companies have come out of this. Xero and TradeMe have helped shape New Zealand's uh, approach to fostering technology. Some industries, like healthcare or financial, financial services, still have a way to go when it comes to benefiting from digital tech. The next crucial wave of innovation has to be deep technology. We live in such a critical time in our history where everything we do now has a more profound impact on our future than anything we've done in the past. Deep tech is our only way forward, but we're not investing into it. A recent report on startup investment in New Zealand showed that more than half of the investment in early stage companies in this country went into software and services last year. Only 6.7% went into biotechnologies, 4% into healthcare, 1% into energy. This does not reflect where our current concerns about our global problems should be. So what's the reason we're not investing in our future? It's because deep tech is seen as difficult. First of all, it's expensive. It costs a lot more money to send rockets into orbit or to build a facility that produces biofuel than it does to pay a software engineer to put a mobile app together. Technical due diligence in this industry is difficult. For an investor to put money into a project, they need to have enough faith in the technology behind it to believe that it will work. To invest in deep technology, which is a broad field, investors need to become experts in artificial intelligence for one project and microfluidics the next. While it's easy to understand how a software solution will benefit a certain consumer market, deep technology is by definition unproven and often so cutting edge that a market for it doesn't always exist yet. And it takes a long time. This kind of technology company will be doing research and development for far longer than a digital technology company would. Deep tech companies are often working to prove a scientific theory before figuring out how to scale it. Uh, let's say you're founding a company that's recycling electronic waste by extracting the metals from it using bacteria, a process called biometallurgy. Getting a biotechnology company like this off the ground takes a long time. First, you need to find and cultivate the right species of bacteria, then you need to figure out how to turn electronic waste into a feedstock for these bugs. Then comes the journey of scaling this process up from a beaker on a lab bench to a 10-liter bioreactor to a demonstration plant. By the time the first commercial-scale facility is up and running, a decade will have passed. Now, most investment firms have a mandate to turn their clients' money into more money in five years' time. The quick and easy option is to invest in a couple of software startups that only need a couple of months and a few um, a few programmers to, make, to start making money. Now, a biotechnology startup, which won't start generating revenue for 10 years, becomes a difficult sell. You're starting to see why our short-term thinking is causing so much more harm than good. Now, despite all the perceived difficulties of investing in these industries, we have to shift our focus. We have to shift our focus from digital and software solutions for small markets to clean technologies that rethink the way we deal with waste from short-term financial returns to long-term solutions to our most significant global problems, from easy-to-understand business models to risky, adventurous projects which push the boundaries of what's possible. Now, for the investors in the room, rest assured, deep tech is lucrative. You just need a little patience. Because these industries are working on the difficult-to-solve global problems, the solutions that will come out of it are exceptional. From an investor standpoint, deep tech companies are working in niche spaces on technologies that are patentable. This means that these companies will keep making money for a long time. So the timing, the timing of when that first dollar is made becomes far less important. Firms like Propel X, Lux Capital, and Founders Fund have realized this, whereas much of the rest of the world is still chasing after the next software fix. Well, software and digital have the somewhat reckless approach of move fast and break things. Deep technology companies are working to de-risk themselves as early on as possible. And yes, deep technology can be difficult, but I'm working to change that. The boom in digital tech can partly be attributed to the fact that it's, it's fairly accessible. All you need is a computer and a little coding know-how to get started. But if you have a mad deep tech idea that you want to test out, chances are you'll need access to some tools to do this. Now, level two exists in order to bridge this gap. Level 2 is New Zealand's only deep tech-focused innovation hub and is home to dozens of startups in fields as diverse as aerospace, ag tech, and medical diagnostics. 
We're working to make deep tech more accessible by building shared labs and workshop spaces, providing mentorship, and celebrating the successes of our residents who aren't just dreaming about saving the world, they're doing it. Digital technologies have done a great job at transitioning us from a physical pen and paper world to one that's faster and more collaborative. But the time has been and gone. So many of these companies that we're still investing in are taking away from the bigger solutions that we so desperately need. Captured in these retro-futuristic images is an ambition and an optimism about improving our world in real, tangible ways. Deep technology is the only way for us to realize these visions of a better future, and we have no choice but to start paying attention. Thank you.